so as the tradition continues the mental break time uh, sorry to those if uh, I mean you have heard of this joke before now in the US America Europe and so on they have a lot of jokes about blondes those beautiful ladies with golden hair and so on and it is based on sort of a misconception or conception that you see when God gives different things to different people he is very uniform and just so if someone has a lot of beauty then the intelligence will be low if someone has a lot of intelligence then the beauty will be low and so on right so that type of thing is there so therefore these jokes are there but we may think that this is you or me or anybody else so this blonde lady goes to the main BMW de dealership in the city and she is very angry and she says to the attendant where is the manager's office he said I can help you no no I want to go to the manager so she goes to the manager and he recognizes oh uh, she, she bought a BMW and so on how are you uh, lady and this and that he said you see don't don't do this how are you 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 sold me a BMW 5 series such a costly car I took it only last week it does not run correctly he said madam this is not possible I mean there are highest standards of quality control we don't do that said, no no I paid so much and it does not work properly and he said maybe I mean he was very uh, apologetic maybe you are doing something wrong she got angry you think I am a fool I did everything according to the instructions and so on and it does not run properly so what happens you see during the daytime I put it on D gear and I drive during the night time I put it on N gear and it does, not, it does not drive. Break over. Okay. So we were talking of the direct current electrical potential crack monitoring system. This is like a fracture toughness test facility. Remember fracture toughness, plain strain fracture toughness. So there is a compact notched specimen and it will be loaded under fatigue but then added to the system is an electrical system where the electrical system will keep on measuring the changes in the voltage at nano volt or micro volt level and recording it and that nano or micro voltage will be converted into nanometers or micrometers and so on so that as the load is applied 100 cycles 200 cycles 300 cycles the growth in the crack size will be measured without this we could not do the work that we have shown in the heading right fatigue crack growth we cannot do that rate okay so now the topic is stress and crack length and its relation to crack propagation right that is it isn't it that you are applying a stress fatigue loading is there the crack length is increasing or propagating so in the figure the test sample has a small side crack we will see that constant amplitude cyclic stress constant amplitude means that it is not a random type of fatigue right it is going up and down in a very symmetric manner so constant amplitude cyclic stress is applied and the increase in the crack length with the load cycles is measured by the previous machine when the crack length a is a small the fatigue crack growth rate this is a brand new thing and one of the cardinally important things now in the future fatigue crack growth rate delta a delta a if this is a delta a change in length of the crack divided by number of cycles so fatigue crack growth rate is d a d n right if i write delta n delta a upon delta n and take the limit then it will become the differential right so this is the fatigue crack growth rate but this growth rate is the crack growth rate with the number of cycles we are not saying time because time is not important if the machine is not working then for two days four days one week it is not working when the machine starts working how many number of cycles it did and then it is stopped and then again when it is started so time is not important number of cycles is important so change in crack size delta a with respect to change in the number of cycles this is the very very critical uh, thing known as fatigue crack growth rate the crack growth rate dadn 
increases with increasing crack length right of course if the crack is now larger then it will grow at a faster rate so they have done a lot of theory they have done a lot of theory for 10 years 20 years and so on and finally they decided that the fatigue crack growth rate the fatigue crack growth rate is majorly a function of two things the applied stress and the existing crack size right they consider a lot of factors they considered it just like a brand new problem in physics so whatever factors they could think of right everything humidity this material strength yield strength but if they are saying if it is the same material if the material changes it changes but if it is the same material and it has some pre-existing crack a then the crack growth rate under fatigue is a function of basically two things the applied stress if the applied stress increases the crack growth rate increases and the existing crack if the ex existing crack is very slow it will grow at a slow uh, sorry if it is very small it will grow at a slow rate but if the existing crack is already slightly large it will grow at a faster rate so rate of crack growth is directly proportional to the applied stress or to the existing crack size so these are the two major factors there would be other factors which are not as significant as this later research later research they said that the crack growth rate is a function of a stress intensity sorry for my spelling mistake typing mistake this y is not there a stress intensity factor k1 rather than the sigma it is a still sigma but a better format of it so they said that initially we have developed this theory so we will write an equation for dadn in terms of the applied stress and the existing crack but then they said that basically we there is a some flaw some crack is already there and near that crack there is a stress intensity so don't look at the applied stress look at the stress intensity in the vicinity close to the crack that will be much more important in determining so try to replace try to replace this remote stress or nominal stress with the stress intensity factor k1 not k1c k1c is a fixed value it is a material property but k1 every time sigma changes k1 changes right there is a crack you apply some load there is a k1 you increase the load the k1 increases right so the k1 keeps on changing so instead of sigma use a stress intensity factor k1 right and k1 of course remember k1 is equal to sigma root pi a so it increases includes a stress and crack length both inside right so it will be slightly complicated that instead of sigma you have k1 and k1 is already a function of sigma and a right and then there is a also so now we are saying that the crack growth rate fatigue crack growth rate is a function of the existing crack size a and the applied stress intensity factor k1 okay and then if remember d a d n d a d n right is a factor of those two things so they are saying that the sigma and the a both are gone and change in the stress intensity k, k delta k right at some value it was k1 at some value it became k2 so this is delta k so d a d n is directly proportional to delta k d a d n crack growth rate is directly proportional to delta k only one quantity now because k1 is already a function of sigma and stress intensity so they found that d a d n is a function of sigma and a and both of them are inside k now but instead of k they are saying take delta k and of course if it is a proportionality sign it is directly proportional then they have to make it into an equation so they are saying that uh, we will use a power law equation to fit it power law remember if it is a normal equation it, if it is a straight line equation this m is not there right if it is a straight line equation then y is equal to mx plus c type of equation is there y is equal to mx plus c a constant and m but if it is a power law 
then there is a power of this thing and some coefficient constant here. So, this capital A and this small m are the two factors that they will try to find out from experiments and so on. The original idea is that d a d n is directly proportional to delta k and they have found by a lot of hit and trial or theory that the equation will not be a linear equation, it will be a non-linear equation and this non-linear equation is not quadratic or cubic or exponential, it is a power law type of equation and power law is usually this that whatever factor of interest is there, raise it to some power. So, that number you have to find out and multiply the equation by a constant coefficient. So, that is that you have to find right. So, now here d a d n is the fatigue crack growth rate in millimeter per cycle or inch per cycle right millimeter per cycle. Delta k is the stress intensity factor range k max minus k min of course, because it is a stress intensity. So, mega Pascal root meter or k s i root inch a and m are constants depending on the material, the environment, the frequency, the temperature, the stress ratio and so on right. So, so these are the things that are there. So, now this is the th third equation, the first was the Griffith equation which we did not use too much. So, if we move that, remove that then we say there are two basic equations of fracture toughness that you now know and this is huge, this is huge. The first equation is the k 1 equation, k 1 is equal to sigma root pi a, the stress intensity equation which includes the sigma, the applied remote stress and the a, the pre-existing crack size in the material. Now, after having the direct potential probe machine, which can calculate the change in the crack size as you keep on increasing the number of cycles in a fatigue test, right. So, now you can measure the change in the crack size. Therefore, you can measure the change in the crack size per unit number of cycles, right. So, d a d n you can measure. So, now there is a huge brand new equation and this is the law, this is the law which is the fracture mechanics law, right. We will see it later on, this is the fracture mechanics law and where delta k is the change in the stress intensity and a and m are material factors, they are some material properties that they will have to find. So, here now this is the graph that we were trying to talk about earlier that there is a compact specimen just as it is, but now here is the a the crack length and here is the number of cycles because that is what you are plug that as the number of cycles increase what happens to the crack length. So, now there is a material for which we applied some remote stress sigma 1 and of course, when we apply sigma 1 and right. So, so then there is this curve this curve between the crack length and the number of cycles. As you increase the number of cycles, the crack length increases. As you increase the number of cycles, the crack length increases. This is some other stress sigma 2, where again, where again uh, at some stress there is some value of a, at another stress, uh, sorry, another number of cycles, when the number of cycles increase, the a has increased and so on. If this curve is higher than this curve, then what is, what does it mean that the crack growth rate is higher, right? the slope of this line is more than the slope of this line, right. The slope of this line is more than the slope of this line. So, obviously, we know that if the applied stress is more, the crack growth rate is higher. This means sigma 2 is larger than sigma 1, right. Sigma 2 should be larger than sigma 1 because the slope of the curve is small, the slope of this curve is large, okay. So, this is the plot of DADN in a way.